I appreciate the fact that 100 years of blood isn't something you forget overnight. They have crossed the line we cannot allow them to cross. How will this end? In fire. I suggest you stay in your quarters, stick your fingers in your ears, and hum real loud until it's over. Hello, and welcome to Who Are You? A Babylon 5 Watchcast hosted by two friends who have gotten to know each other and will continue to get to know each other while re-watching one of their favorite shows from their childhood, Babylon 5. I'm Jafer. And I'm Laura. And today, Laura, I get to ask you, what do you want? You still haven't answered my question, Ambassador. What do you want? Well, what do you mean, what do I want? What do you want? You really want to know what I want? You really want to know the truth? I want to really, really, really want to zig a zig Does that answer your question? Well, I'll tell you what I really want. <laughs> <laughs> I want a vacation. I'm so, yeah. so burnt and crispy. I'm just really burnt out at work. I feel that. Yeah. Do you have anything planned? We have something planned, so we are going to take a little road trip this time. Last year we did a you know a flying vacation and we did the Puerto Rico thing, but mm -hmm. this year we're doing road trip, which is an interesting choice when gas prices be like they are. Yeah, <laughs> but flight prices are also skyrocketing to go with it. And so. the troubles, because I have some family that were trying to fly somewhere and flight kept getting canceled, so they never got to go. Yeah, I hope all that is hashed out before yeah i've got two flight vacations planned this year yeah i'm hoping to get a, a flight vacation in later because we both mm -hmm. want to go to star trek las vegas i would that's one of mine yeah. so <laughs> be happy to hang out there yeah let's um, hope that, that all this gets ironed out before that <laughs> yep i i bought my tickets a while ago mm -hmm. and they were significantly cheaper than they are now yeah that's the thing isn't I'll it i'll say that i think the tickets for that have almost tripled in price for me yikes when I look at them. So glad I got them when I did. Okay, see to Las Vegas. It's generally not too bad. I said oh, knocking yeah. on wood. Yeah, I'm sure that's... yeah. Take a look. I will. So we're doing road trip. We're keeping it close. So Aaron has a lot of experience out in New Mexico. When he was, you know, an undergraduate graduate, he had gotten his degree in anthropology and his oh, kind of okay. zone of expertise was the American Southwest. So he spent a healthy time in New Mexico and like Eastern Arizona and that sort of thing. And I don't really, I haven't really been to much New Mexico. Like when my family went to other places, we'd go through New Mexico was kind of our thing. Mm -hmm. But we didn't really stop and just like do New Mexico. So that's what we're doing this yeah. time. We're going to take Owen down to Carlsbad where the big caves are. Oh, that's fun. You know, him being a Minecrafter. And... Minecrafter. Yes. Yeah, he's going to love that. We're going to do a big cave. So we're going to do that first. And then we're going to go to an area called Silver City, which is in sort of the southwestern New Mexico mountains. Okay. Um, and we're going to have a cabin out there. So we're going to do you know, just hiking and stuff. I have my fingers crossed about, you know, I don't really want to see rattlesnakes. I know we got them here in Oklahoma, but um, <laughs> just... You know, I just want space from them for me. Yeah. You know, <laughs> um, so we're going to do some hiking and, and see what we see. Owen is hoping that we find some Mexican red need tarantulas. Apparently they do exist that far north and, you know, mostly they're in Mexico, but they do come up into the hmm. southwest United States. Um, and Owen's okay. deal is bugs. So he's hoping we'll see some of those and then we'll round it out with Santa Fe. We're going to do like a, sounds fun. a little resort in Santa Fe and then do everything that there is there. And that's coming up for us in a couple of weeks. So I'll give you some warning. Nice. Uh, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it because I do like a road trip. There's something very freeing about just like driving around the West. Yeah. It's going to be hot because it's the desert, but uh, it'll be a dry hot as opposed to our 110 heat index here in Oklahoma City. Well, I'm um, happy for that for you. You know, that sounds like a really good time. I hope gas prices go down. I don't know what they're at by you. They're like 535 by me right now. Oh, no. We're generally on the low end. Oklahoma's, okay. you know, got our own little, like, oil industry with quotes around it. Mm -hmm. um, but we're still running about the 430 
uh, okay. around here. And then I don't know what it's like in New Mexico, but we'll find out. But we, you know, we have hybrid, yep. so at least we. Oh, well, it's not too bad. We don't get it as yeah. bad. Yeah, I am looking forward to it. My, I've got next week off, as I think I had mentioned to move mm -hmm. last episode that we just recorded. That is my first week off since my trip to Hawaii in last September. Yeah. So I've gone almost a year. I think I've gone 10 months without vacation. Yeah. Crispy. Eight months, nine months. Yeah. It's time. <laughs> Let's take Lauren Jaffer out of the oven. I'm looking forward to remodeling my kitchen. <laughs> right? Yeah. All right. But yeah, Vegas, Star Trek Vegas. Look into it. That'd be great. Yes. I will look into it because it would be so great if we could see anybody who listens to the podcast there. <laughs> oh, oh, we could meet at the same time we met fans. Oh, <gasps> Mean person. So That'd be excited. fun. I'm, I'm excited um, already. Okay. This episode, season two, episode nine, The Coming of Shadows. We got a lot to talk about here. So I've got much. a thing off the bat. I just want to, this episode won the Hugo for best traumatic presentation in 1996. Mm, okay. I support that. This is, this is super noteworthy because the competition that it was against. <sighs> Ooh, do tell. This beat Apollo 13. Whoa. 12 Monkeys. Uh. Toy Story. And the DS9 episode, The Visitor, which is Tony Todd as old Jake. Oh, my gosh. It wasn't until 2002 they split up the Hugos to have a movie category and a TV category. Mm -hmm. Well, it's an under 90 minute, 90 minute plus category is how they define sure, it. Sure, okay, yeah. Only eight TV shows before this split ever won a Hugo. It almost always went to movies in the like 50, 60 year history of the Hugo up to that point. Wow. Three episodes of Twilight Zone. Four episodes of Star Trek between the original series and TNG, uh -huh. and two for Babylon 5. This was the first. Wow. That's some stiff competition that you just named. Right? That's crazy. Yeah. It's, it's really one of the things that kind of places it in the, um, you know, the history books. Mm -hmm. And I think it's part of the reason the show has the legacy that it does. Because it was the first non-Twilight Zone, non-Star Trek TV show to ever win a Hugo. Wow. Which is a big deal. It was such a big deal. Warner Brothers rebroadcast this episode has the Hugo award winning coming of shadows and like put a little special graphics package together for it and just re-aired it sometimes just for that. Babylon 5, I think it's great. I don't know why I just got goosebumps hearing about that, but I did. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. I, and yep. it shows in this episode. I I typed all caps first thing in my notes. Here's where all the budget went, you guys. There's a thing about that. So this episode is the first episode and it starts a trend in the series where instead of using cgi backgrounds for space mm -hmm. they got the hubble telescope had started to send back really high-res photos hmm. and so a lot of the photos that they use for the background that they cgi ships and planets on top of are actually real life universe hubble telescope shots wow i didn't know that Yep, That's neither did crazy. I. I had no idea until I was reading stuff about the production of this episode. I was just like, super cool. Wow, there's so much CGI. There's so much space. There's so many guests. Mm -hmm. There's so much new music. This is just a crazy episode. This episode had its own soundtrack released separately. Well, yeah. I mean, there's a lot. The other noteworthy thing about this episode is this is definitely a turning point in the story. Mm -hmm. JMS says this is the point if you're looking at a traditional story structure. Mm -hmm. This is where the introduction ends and where the rising action begins. Yeah. We certainly ramp it up here. We ramp it up a ton right off the bat. We open on Centauri Prime with the Centauri Emperor heading out for Babylon 5. Yeah. I looked at his prime minister's name because, you know, we're getting these cards. And I thought, hmm, are we going to get a card of this mm -hmm. guy? Apparently, this guy's name is Prime Minister Malachi. It, there's Prime Minister Malachi and Emperor Turin, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the, the prime minister, the actor's name is also Malachi. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I, Does he have a card? Did you check I, the checklist that came with the cards? You know, I should have gone that far and I didn't. I got it right in front okay. of me. Okay. Yeah, we're looking for prime minister Malachi. Minister Malachi. Oh. He's a rare. Oh, very nice. Says Emperor Turin. We might see them in the packs. Fingers crossed. At least in this set. This set is a little bit more focused on season one and two, but there's some random season five stuff in there. Yeah. I noticed season four, season five. I'm going to buy a box of a different set for later Yay. to mix it up a little bit. Yeah. But we'll do the bit a couple more times before we get to that. Okay. So the prime minister and Emperor Turin are discussing 
an upcoming trip to Babylon 5. The prime minister does not want the emperor to go, mm-hmm. but he insists. I love this bit where his aides offer him a wig and he refuses it. Yeah. <laughs> he decides he's yeah. going to go bald. Not really yep. bald, bald, but, you know. He says that the women are right to shave their heads and not deal with the fuss. I thought that was cute. Which made me wonder if all centauri hair grows that way. Like, just out? And what that would look like. <laughs> yeah, just out. <laughs> Hmm. We cut over to Babylon 5, where Jakar is outraged because the Emperor's family sucks. Yeah, he lists a great many of crimes. He's talking to Sheridan, and he just lists a great many of crimes. He's a monster, an aberration, a criminal. Yeah, like his grandfather did this, his dad did this, like all this shit, all these war crimes. Mm -hmm. And he's all like, well, you're not wrong, but has he done any of that stuff? Yeah. And Jakar's all like, hmm. And then he's all like, well, you know, didn't he like cede a bunch of territory, stolen territory and, you know, make a man, try to make amends and stuff. He's like, oh, you just don't get it. Yeah. So Sheridan says he appreciates that, you know, a hundred years of bloodshed can't be forgotten overnight, but there's really nothing I can do about it, dude. Like this is a, yeah. a place for diplomacy and he wants to come to diplomacy. Like, yeah. What am I supposed to do You're about let that? Him on. And he's all like, did I turn invisible? Like, yes, I'm letting him on. Yes. Uh, Sheridan is a particularly delicate here with mm-hmm. Jakar. He he points out that this is an opportunity for dialogue, but Jakar isn't having it. He walks away very offended and vaguely threatening. We come back from theme to someone with a strange brooch coming through space TSA. Mm-hmm. I've... Now, we know this to be the emblem of the Rangers. Yes. This is where the episode of the Rangers are introduced. There's a little bit of a production note on this brooch, though, that I mm-hmm. thought was super cool because I had no idea. I don't know if they describe it in an episode or not. I don't remember. But the brooch is literally like two people. One is a Mimbari and one is a human. Uh-huh. Yeah. They're, they're one piece of solid metal mm-hmm. that are like joined together. Like they both come out of the same place and they're holding the gem together. Oh, OK. So it's very yeah. symbolic. I like that. So he is coming through space to say he appears like he's looking for Garibaldi, like he sees him, yeah. but he doesn't approach him. He's yeah, just gonna, there's too many people around. He's just going to stalk him. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> We're fine with stalking on this show. Clearly. The Emperor arrives and Lord Rifa is there talking to Lando. He's going to have an audience with the Emperor after his speech. Mm-hmm. Rifa gives Lando a speech. It's made the make the Emperor look weak by predicting things that Lando will Lando will make these grand predictions, and they will be made true by Rifa. Mm-hmm. Lando comments on the sabotage. It's madness, Rifa. Rifa madness, Rifa madness. I went to the road to hide my face, but the road cried out, no hiding place, there's no hiding place down here. <laughs> nice. Got one. He also points out that he's taking a big gamble on this because it's going to destroy his current standing with the emperor yeah. and the emperor's um just grant him a big favor they're buddies mm-hmm. let him get divorced yeah yeah two-thirds of the way last episode and then he goes and does this but reef is like nah. when the emperor is gone everything will be okay everyone will just remember mm-hmm. that you were right so yeah this whole situation notably makes veer quite uncomfortable and londo actually agrees He's a little uncomfortable. Yep. Yep. We cut to the emperor arriving. There's a full delegation to receive him in dress uniforms. Mm-hmm. You know, the thing that Delenn was expecting for her uh, true seeker uh-huh. last season actually shows up this time. Yeah. After introductions, the emperor asks Dr. Franklin about Kosh because he's super curious about Vorlons. Yeah, he wants to see a Vorlon. He says the Centauri have sent expeditions into Vorlon space and none of them have returned. Dun, dun, so maybe dun. you should stop doing that. I'm just saying. All right. I think the implication is that they have by turns time. And that's why he's curious and not like pissed. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. <laughs> it's like if he had sent a bunch of ships in and they all got massacred, presumably, he'd probably be upset as opposed to like the childlike curious that he is. Mm-hmm. They are a mystery to him. Yeah. We cut to Jakar in his quarters, and he appears to be talking to a representative of the Kari on the TV. So they have apparently all resolved that Jakar must take this opportunity, but not for dialogue. He's going to kill the Centauri Emperor. Yep. Just 
assassinate this guy. Just do it. And we talked about this actually before we started recording. The emperor in the next scene asks a very interesting question. Indeed. Why are you here? Yeah. He asks it to Sheridan. Yeah. It's not quite as enigmatic as the uh, who are you or what do you want, mm -hmm. but it's still a nice turn, kind of reflecting the Centauri's position right now as neither. Oh, yeah. Officially, right? Yeah. Officially, right now, they are still neither aligned with the Vorlons or the Shadows, mm -hmm. as this changes in this episode. And I guess it's sort of acknowledging that the humans aren't either, because he's talking to a yeah. human. The humans haven't, mm -hmm. haven't encountered enough to pick a side. Yeah. I think it's also like there's a certain unknowingness to the Vorlons and the Shadows. Like when they ask this question, they are like reaching down to ask this question right mm -hmm. like we are a, we are literally a higher power um we are so technologically advanced and socially advanced economically like you there's no comparison mm -hmm. in our societies and so we look down to you and ask these questions and that felt how this was as well it was that same kind of downward look but it coming from the emperor this position being you know, like the president asking you a question or something, you know, mm -hmm. you know, someone who is in a position of power above you that is kind of unknowing in what they could and couldn't do to your life should they choose to mm -hmm. uh, be petty about something. And so there's also that analog as well, that the power that we see in our leaders is not terribly different than the power of these unknowable alien races in comparison because mm -hmm. when we look at it from the galactic scale mm -hmm. you know that's kind of the comparison compared to like the personal scale you to the leader of your country yeah so it does in a way make the vorlons and the shadows a little bit more relatable at least at the very least a little bit more understandable by kind of understanding that gap it gives us that clear you are to the emperor you know sheridan is the emperor what the collected societies and species of the universe are to the first ones. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good point. And so it just helps you make it helps, just helps it make it a little bit more understandable in my brain meets. And I really appreciated that. <laughs> and we find out a little more about Sheridan through this question. You know, he says that he's there voluntarily is ultimately the answer. He chose to go to earth force. He wasn't drafted. And the emperor tells him that he's never made a choice in his life. Everything he's done yeah. has been set out for him by someone else, which gives Sheridan a chance to pontificate with some live every moment, like it's the last moment of your yeah. life stuff. Um, yeah. The emperor reflects on this. The past tempts, the present confuses, the future frightens while our lives slip past the moments in between. Mm -hmm. And this quote from the emperor Turin here, JMS has gone on record as saying that's his favorite quote from the whole show. I mean, it's... So real, it it's hurts. Good. <laughs> yeah, it's real good. It hurts. It's, it's bumper stickerable. Mm -hmm. But the emperor tells Sheridan that he's going to seize a moment. That's his intention and choose something mm -hmm. better. So we know that we're setting up for some sort of big change. Yep. We get some very dramatic music here and we cut to the hall where the emperor is making his speech. And Jakar arrives, surprising the command staff. Garibaldi is sweeping the area and catches the ranger following him. Delen sees Jakar like grasping at his uh his gloves his gauntlets. Yeah. yeah. And it's just like she knows something's up. Mm -hmm. Like she sees him do this and beelines for him. Yeah. She's going toward the problem. She's she's going to try to defuse him, I guess. They tell us mm -hmm. during this scene where we're all waiting for the Emperor that he's got a few telepaths. I guess he has two pairs of telepaths. Um, well, they're, it, it's four telepaths that are all bonded together. Mm -hmm. So they raise them together at birth, and they're linked in such a way that they keep each other informed even far away. So two of the telepaths have yep. been left on Centauri Prime. Two are traveling with him. And they're these ladies mm -hmm. in these fantastic, like, lacy veils. Super ethereal white gowns. Mm -hmm. We never hear them Super say a cool word, looking. so that makes them extra mysterious. Yeah. So much mystery. Yeah. Sheridan is disappointed, though. He points out that Ambassador Kosh did not come for the speech. Yeah. Well, he, know, he knows that uh, Emperor Turin really wants to meet a Vorlon. Mm -hmm. Anyways, the Emperor's making it down and he collapses. 
And I've actually got a scrub point here for you. 27, 21 left in the episode. Okay. I'm I'm probably close. I'm looking at the telepaths at this moment. Are, are you looking at the telepaths with the emperor or the, with the prime minister? <gasps> Who is he meeting with? Right? I saw this and was all like, no, that that doesn't make any sense. Rewind, saw it again, and was all like, what the hell? Looked online, found some notes from JMS on it. Okay, tell me who these people are, or as much as you know. He's meeting with a human in a suit mm -hmm. and two Mimbari who appear to be dressed as members of the worker caste. They're not in the traditional religious okay. garb, and they're not in the traditional warrior garb. So as far as we know, they're worker caste. We're not 100% on that. That hasn't really been fleshed out because they ignore the worker caste. Uh, right, right. JMS teases that these three are incognito rangers oh. gathering information and trying to get access to a world on the edge of Centauri space for a future base or plan. Okay. I mean, it tracks with what, what else is going on in this episode, doesn't it? Yep. And in Spoily Town, cover your ears or skip 15 real quick, my personal theory is that they're securing resources to build the White Star Fleet. Okay. Uh, see, this goes by so fast. I didn't clock that. Right? It's so quick. They're on there for like three seconds. And as we discussed off pod just now, I watch all of these episodes twice. I watch them once just to enjoy and once to make notes. And mm -hmm. in two watches, I did not catch that he, I just assumed, you know, just some random Centauri people also in the room. Yeah. Wow. That's a good the get. Case. Thank you for pointing that out because that's amazing. Right? Amazing that's crazy. detail. I don't believe my other screen cap moment later in this episode is nearly as fun, but that one was super cool. Yeah. So back in med lab, Franklin is applying his medicinal forehead stroking. It's all right. I'm a doctor. Uh, <laughs> or it looks like he is because he has his arm behind the emperor <laughs> in this way that I yeah. was like, oh, I could see him just... <laughs> Doing that. He talks to mm -hmm. the emperor. He's he's knows that he's dying. Yeah. It will be difficult to move him. And the emperor asks Franklin if he will deliver a message because he doesn't trust any of his own people to do so. Yep. We see Londo and Rifa. They're worried that their plan is moving too slow because they haven't had time to discredit the emperor yet. So if he dies before they have a chance to discredit him, they don't have a legitimate claim to seize power. Yeah. Yeah. Londo decides to go to the shadows and have them attack a Narn listening post. Yeah, we get quadrant 14 this time. Reef is incredulous, but Londo says he's going to take care of it. Veer objects to being sent for Mr. Morden and yeah. tries to remind Londo that he has a choice. Something that the Emperor earlier mentioned he didn't feel like he'd had any choices. And Veer says, you have a choice. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was interesting. Londo refuses, says he doesn't have a choice. Veer says, someday I'm going to remind you of this conversation. Yeah. Um, but Londo says, I get it. You know, I'm declaring war on the Narn. Just nobody knows it yet. Yep. Jakar is very upset in his quarters that the Emperor had the indecency to die before he could kill him. Classic Jakar rant. Franklin arrives at Jakar's quarters to send this message from the Emperor, an apology, and an attempt to begin healing things between their two peoples. Yeah. He, w he came to denounce... Centauri violence against the Narn and try to make things better. Mm -hmm. Jakar had no idea, of course. And yeah. Franklin yeah, was ready to kill him. Franklin declares this might be the biggest tragedy of the whole damn story, which I think is JMS speaking to us. Pat patently false. Oh, no. I, I would say the biggest tragedy is in about ten minutes. Oh, <laughs> yes. No, I <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I made a note continuing the tragedy. Yeah. Londo has a dream sequence at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, he has one of those Centauri prophetic dreams we've heard about. Yeah. And we get to see it. We see a uh, Regesh 3. We see a hand reaching out from a sun. Mm -hmm. uh, we see Londo stepping outside of the chambers in Centauri Prime and seeing shadow ships flying overhead. Mm -hmm. We see his ascension to emperor. Yeah. And then finally, he sees his own death at the hands of Jakar. Who's missing an eye this time. He's missing an eye. Yeah, notably. And so he strangles mm -hmm. him to death. This this whole plot has started, you know, speaking of Strange New Worlds, as we were earlier, part of the two episodes that I've seen, so I can't spoil much for anybody, 
is that Pike seems to know his death. He knows how he's going to die. And I thought about how yep. very differently these two men are handling this problem. But Wando is no Captain Pike. No. Um, he is also disturbed by this. He's startled awake and he sees the time and knows that the invasion of the colony has begun. So we cut over to quadrant 14. Yep. And we see the attack. The attack is happening. Um, and it, it's a couple of shadow ships and they just destroy everything. Yeah, they just rip everything apart cut it in half with lasers uh, and yep a nice extended cgi scene yep they fly in wreck house piece mm -hmm. he then confirms with rifa and then encounters jakar yeah so he makes a note that it's all like the narns will know soon and then he hears londo <laughs> and he's just like oh narns know now uh-huh and he's expecting jakar to be upset about the attack and maybe even be trying to project violence upon him for mm -hmm. his role in it yeah uh but that's not it. He's not aware of the attack at all. He only knows of the Emperor's plea for peace and offers to buy Londo a drink. Yeah, this is the biggest damn tragedy of the story. The look on Londo's face at 1831 left in the episode, th this is the biggest tragedy. Londo knows how badly he is fucked up now. Now you fucked up! 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 Now you have fucked up. Yeah, he's done fucked up. He is done fucked he's up now. He's fucked up so bad. The Centauri scouts arrive, and then immediately after the Narn arrive to investigate, the shooting war has begun, and then also we see the assassination of the Centauri Prime Minister. Yeah. Arifa was going to take out the last obstacle, he said, and it's mm -hmm. Prime Minister Malachi. Rest in peace. Uh, the Ranger is finally alone in the room with Garibaldi. And he gives him a USB stick with an AVI file in it. Mm -hmm. He opens it up and it's Sinclair. Hello, old friend. It's been a while. We get Sinclair on. Hey! Sinclair on the TV to commercial. <laughs> yep. Back from the dramatic tension, Sinclair is talking on the TV and he tells Garibaldi there's a great darkness coming. Yeah, yep. you think? Yeah. He explains the army that is the Rangers. They're preparing for the coming war. We get a little bit about this and a little bit more later kind of cuts in between a bit mm -hmm. where he's all like, they're my eyes and ears. Where you see them, you see me. Mm -hmm. He says, stay close to the Vorlon and be wary of shadows. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, in CNC, Ivanova is telling Sheridan they've been intercepted a message from Narn for Jakar at, unintentionally because it was sent on an open channel. Well, I think it's intentional. Well, she's unintentionally intercepted it. It was yeah. intentionally sent on an open channel. That's how I was speaking. But they're telling Jakar about the assault in Quadrant 14. Yeah. The Centauri have attacked the largest off-homeworld Narn colony. Yeah. So we see Jakar getting this message. There are a quarter of a million Narn there. He's both devastated mm -hmm. and enraged because he knows he puts it together that Londo knew. That was the mm -hmm. strange look on Londo's face. Yep. And in his grief, he, sh he breaks his stone table. <laughs> Yeah, he's got this very nice bespoke stone table that he just destroys. Yeah. In his rage, he goes on a fucking rampage. He clotheslines security guards. He is just beating the shit out of anyone on his way to Malari's quarters. Yeah. Shouting his name. He rounds the corner and Sheridan is waiting there with like six security guards with guns drawn. Yeah, it's just suddenly Sheridan. Yeah. And he's waiting there. He tells him he needs to calm down. He has to choose between revenge or saving his people. A tough tough place for him to be at this moment jakar hits the wall mm -hmm. and then sheridan just gives him a pass on all those guys he decked on his way over here yeah it's all like it's a shitty day you can you can take this one yeah we'll just we'll just leave you here the emperor wakes up he asks for kosh mm -hmm. kosh comes and visits him turin asks how will this end and kosh says in fire mm, that doesn't make me feel good kosh he's not wrong though he's not wrong Oh, boy. So in Sheridan's office, Garibaldi is filling them in about his mysterious mm -hmm. message and doesn't want to reveal the source. And because Sheridan loves conspiracy theories, he's fine with this. He's like, eh, it's <laughs> fine. Oh, I don't get to find out who. This will be a fun mystery for me to unravel later. Uh -huh. Garibaldi talks about, you know, Jakar thinks there's this other race out there. And what if they are really supporting the Centauri? Yeah, that'd be something. 
Yeah, it would, wouldn't it? The emperor hears from Rifa about the attack, who then goes to tell Rifa something. It's all like, actually, fuck you. Londo, get over here. <laughs> yeah, so he whispers to Londo and then gives up and dies. Yep, just, oh, that was it. Yeah. Uh, he lost the will to live, yeah. actually. <laughs> wouldn't you? <laughs> Uh, Quite possibly. Yeah. So Londo lies about his last words, but the telepaths yeah. know. Yeah. The telepaths are like, uh, that's, you know what? Fuck it. Yep. <laughs> and we just saw the prime minister get killed. We ain't fucking with you guys. Oh yeah. They did. Didn't they? Um, uh, mm -hmm. so they leave, <laughs> they know, they know when to leave a room. Um, yep. and then Londo and Rifa go to the hallway and Londo confesses that Actually, the emperor declared them both damned. Yep. Rifa just laughs and says this is a small price to pay and walks away. Yep. Uh, we cut to Jakar in his quarters. Sheridan tells him they'll be having a council meeting to talk about the problem. In the council chambers, everyone is giving Londo hell over this as Jakar arrives. Yeah. He refuses to send the Narn civilians home. Yeah, he's going to give them productive activity. Yeah. Lando can't even look at Jakar as he comes in. Like, he dances his eyes over and around him. Yeah. Very visibly. Yeah. They call bullshit. Sheridan's like, Earth is going to send third-party observers to the colony to monitor the treatment of the civilians. They're going to interview them. They're going to ask about how this all happened. Like, what kind of weapon could have possibly done this? Mm -hmm. You know, like, we've got, we've got a lot of questions that we need to talk to these civilians about, and they will find answers. Yeah. And Lando's all like, no, they're not welcome. And Sheridan's all like, you going to fire on an Earth Force ship? You want to be in two wars? We don't want to be in a war, but we will be. <laughs> yeah, we don't take kindly to being shot at. Yeah. So Lando decides he's going to try to convince the government to let the civilians leave. <laughs> Dylan turns to Jakar and he tells that everyone that, you know, this is over the line. Obviously, mm -hmm. this is way over the line. <laughs> the Narn have declared war and the hope for peace is over. Rifa lets Lando know that they've done it. The new emperor is aligned with them. This is uh, Cartaja. We find out later they don't name him. He's a nephew, yet. though, of Emperor Turin. Yep. Lando could have pushed to join the royal court. And then we get a little bit of a flashback. Lando remembers his dream and doesn't want the fate that awaits him as emperor. This is his little ploy to not do that. He thinks by staying on the station, he can avoid his fate. Yeah. He, he sincerely tells Veer he has no wish to be emperor. And he means it. Mm -hmm. So so Garibaldi thanks the visitor for their help and says they may have saved Narn lives. So I'm guessing that the plan was to have those observers actually be the rangers, perhaps? Yes, I believe that was the plan. Yeah, that, that Sheridan cooked this up and said, well, you know, we've got these people who say they're here to help. So let's send them. And the visitor just asks him to share information. Mm -hmm. And Garibaldi says, yeah, we'll keep your secret. You won't, you can be here. It's fine. Yeah, just keep us in the loop. And he also asks if anyone else knows they're there. And we cut to Delenn plugging in her own USB. Hello, old friend. We hear Sinclair's voice to credits. Yeah, this was closed captioned as mail number two. And I laughed. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Who could it be? <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> All right. Well, that's the episode, Laura. What you think? Well, I have to agree with the good people at the Hugo Awards, and I give yeah. this a Babylon 5 out of 5. 100%. It's such a good episode. I mean, besides so much happening, which is not necessarily the indicator of a good quality episode. I feel like I say <laughs> that a lot. I like one of the one of the ways I judge these episodes tend to be, well, the plot moved forward a bunch. It's not <laughs> just that. No, 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 no. It's not like I just hate filler episodes. It's that JMS's writing style tends to be so driven that when he's full in and writing himself on the plot he wants to be writing, it tends to be very compelling. Yeah. So it's so good. It's such a great episode. If only for Peter Jurassic just acting the, acting the hell out of that scene at the bar with Jakar. Mm -hmm. If only for that. I mean, this episode gets a five out of five for me. There's just such beautiful tragedy in it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it sucks and you, it hurts watching it. It hurts watching that scene where we know stuff that Jakar doesn't know and you feel mm -hmm. so bad for him. And then it's not only has this episode got 
huge, beautiful tragedy in it, but it's also got lots of plot and it's got lots of beautiful costuming because you see mm -hmm. those telepaths and you want to know more about those telepaths. And the music in this episode. Like the, so the, much the song that plays for the emperor, rather, when he's like making his ascent and everything, mm -hmm. like his theme. It's like there's so much excellent music in this episode. So much so that the first handful of episodes before they really had a lot of music, it really f fills that void. Like it makes that more pronounced to me, knowing how much good music is going to be coming out of the show, especially from this point forward, mm -hmm. to have those first handful of episodes. I think it's one of the reasons why. I felt so wounded mm -hmm. by the, the complete lack of music in some of those episodes. We have such compelling space as well. You know, we get to see the Emperor's ships, like his whole little fleet that traveled with him. Mm -hmm. We see Narn ships. We see Shadow ships. We see Narn Colony. We mm -hmm. see outside of Centauri Prime at the very beginning. Yeah, it's there's just, so much stuff. There's so much world, and you want more of it, and you want to know what's going to happen in this show. And we'll find out more about that next week when we review Season 2, Episode 10, Gropos. Dr. Franklin's father, a military general, brings 25,000 troops to Babylon 5 for a secret mission. This ignites discontent among station personnel as well as mixed feelings in Dr. Franklin. I remember this episode being beautiful, too. I Parts of it, have watched. I've, I've seen this episode since I finished my rewatch. Uh-huh out of order, mm -hmm. um, just walking over to my neighbors as they were doing their watch through for dinner one day. This mm, is the episode okay. that they were watching. Um, so I've seen this one within the last couple of months uh -huh. outside of note taking or my rewatch that I started in 2019. <laughs> 2020, was it? It's 2020. Who knows? Eddie Moore. <laughs> um, time is an ethereal, fickle mistress. Mm -hmm. But... We'll talk about that next week. Before all that, though, we have to say thank you to Jeremy Siegel for our lovely theme music. You can listen to more of Jeremy's music at jeremysiegel42.bandcamp.com. Yeah, that Nailed seems it. right. <laughs> and thank you to Angry Deck Time Machine for our podcast artwork. And you can email us at whoareyoub5 at gmail.com. By the time this one airs, we'll probably have recorded the next mailbag segment already. But send us your mail. We'll read it on air and we'll talk about it. Ask us questions and stuff. It's fun. Um, and then we've also got a very active Discord as well that's mm -hmm. actually going off right now as we're recording the episode. So that's fun. Yeah. So, you know, uh, if you need that link, send us an email or send us a message on Facebook and we'll get you that Discord yep. link and you can join the group. All right. See you next week, Internet. Bye. Bye.